Hello everybody, my name is Kendo, and today we are going on to part 2 of this Beyblade X series. In this video, we'll be learning about the Beyblade types and the parts of an X Beyblade. Knowing the parts of a Bey, and especially the types, will help you build your Bey to become the strongest out there. So the first thing we should be talking about is the parts of a Bey. This section will explain the part breakdown of a Bey. There are three parts to an X Bey. The Blade, which is the main part that collides with other opponent's Bey's. They are mainly covered in metal, as indicated here. There are some Bey's that have a coating of paint that goes over the metal. Some notable examples are Cobalt Drake, Phoenix Wing, and a lot of the limited bays. The next part of a bay is the Ratchet. The Ratchet is the middle section that makes secondary contact to opposing bays and determines the center of gravity of your bay. There are so many intricate details to go over with the Ratchet, so let me quit blabbering and get to it. Ratchets have a naming convention for it. For example, 560, 180, or 370. You might look at these names and start to think about what these numbers mean. To break it down, the single digit numbers are how many sides are on a Ratchet. They are physically shown on the Ratchet here. The two digit numbers are the height of a ratchet, so let's start off with the sides. The sides are what makes contact on the bays and determines how the bay will perform. As of right now, there are currently 7 sides that are out with a 7th one on the way. The sides that are out now are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 9, with 7 being the 7th side to come out. Funny. Sides like 3 and 1 are really good for attack, while sides like 5 are good with defense I would say. But let's move on with the heights. Heights on a ratchet are really self-explanatory. They determine a height of a bay. Like I said, self-explanatory. There are 5 heights that you should be aware of. 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Right now there are only 3 heights out, being 60, 70, and 80. With these heights out, we can help you tell the difference between these heights without laying them out on a table like looking at a meniscus of a liquid. The main way to tell the difference between ratchet heights are these indent lines that are on these sides. The total number of those lines are what the height is. There's another way to tell the difference between heights. For the 60 height, if you look at the ratchet from a top down view, there's an area of the ratchet that is more rounded. For the 70 height, that same part is more hexagonal and there are these lines on the sides running through it and it's more lifted up. For the 80 height, although that middle part is rounded, there is this cone area that goes up a bit that both 60 and 70 heights do not have. There are a couple more details about the ratchet that I haven't talked about so let's get to it. If you look at this white plastic here, there are etches here and here. These etches are what indicate what direction of bay you can put it on. What I mean by that is when you're putting your bay together, the etches here will tell you what spin direction you're able to put it on. So if you want to put, let's say, 360 on Leon Claw. Leon Claw is a right spin bay, so you look at both of the etches, and if this red arrow is pointing at this white arrow with the letter R next to it, then you can put it on Leon Claw without turning it. There are another set of RL letters located on the bottom of the ratchet, so let's flip our ratchet around. There is RL lettering here and an arrow here on the contact part of the ratchet. If you look at your 60 and 70 heights, those letters are clearly visible. But looking at your 80 height, you don't see it. That's because it's pushed up against the little cone lip here. So what does this set of RL letterings mean? This RL lettering tells you if the bay is locked or not. If your bay is not locked, it will instantly fall apart. To prevent that, you have to twist the ratchet to the other letter. Now you can pick up the Beyblade with the ratchet attached without it falling apart. There is one more thing I have to point out. Inside the ratchet there are two of these triangle shaped plastic bits opposite of each other that help hold on to the final part we'll be mentioning next. And that final part is called the bit. The bit is the part of the Beyblade that makes contact to the stadium floor that determines how the bay will move and the resistance of a bay. And what do I mean by the resistance you may ask? We'll get to that later but let's break down the bit starting with the main part that touches the stadium floor and that's the tip. The tip comes in all different shapes for each of the four types. There are also different types of tips that can affect how the bay may perform. There are low, high, gear, metal tipped, and disc bits. Let's move on to the next part of a bay and that's the gears. The gears are part of a gimmick of the stadium that will be explained in another video. These gears have different ratios to them. And there are three that I am aware of that are out right now. And those ratios being 10, 12, and 16. Most bits have a 12 gear ratio on them and they are considered the standard. I don't really know the meaning for the 10 or 16 gear ratios, but if anybody wants to leave an explanation down in the comments below, feel free to do so. We'll move on to the next part of the bit, and there are these cones here. This part is what doesn't make the bit fall off the bay. I don't know what else to say about this part of the bit, but the part above it is worth talking about. 
I don't know if there's an official name for it, but I call it the resistance band. The resistance band determines how prone the bay is to bursting. Let's use ball and flat as examples. You see how one bit has a resistance band and the other doesn't? Well, that's because the resistance band is meant for balance and attack types. Since those type of bays move at moderate to high speeds, they need those resistance bands to not burst really quickly. Now that you know everything about each part of an X bay blade, let's put it together. First, grab your blade and ratchet and make Make sure to align the white plastic on the ratchet to the little cutout on the blade. Then twist the ratchet to lock it in place. Lastly, grab your bit and just push it in like this. And boom, you have a fully assembled X bay blade. Comment down below what bay you use to fully assemble. The bay I use is a lay on claw with a balance type setup. Speaking of types, there are four different types of bay blades that are used in bay blade. Attack, stamina, defense, and balance. These types have their own attributes to them, and each have their strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about each type of bay one by one, starting off with attack types. Attack types are bays that move at high speeds that are complemented with their high attack power. While they may move at those high speeds that grant some high attack power, they lose a lot of stamina. So it's best for the battles with attack types to be quick and over with. Attack types are indicated with this symbol, and mainly have a flat surface on the tip of the bits. Stamina types are bays that spin a long time. I will not get into the logistics of stamina types, but that is as simple as it gets. Stamina type bays are indicated with this symbol, and mainly have a ball shaped bit. Defense types are bay blades that can tank hits from a bay blade while staying stationary. Defense types are indicated with this symbol, and have cone shaped bits. Lastly, we have our balance types. Balance types are bays that are a combination of all three types of bays, making them seem impossible to beat. Balance types are indicated with this symbol, but their bits are a special case. Balance bits have different combinations of how they would perform. I'll give you some examples. The bit point focuses on attack and defense, taper focuses on stamina and attack, and unite, the newest balance bit, focuses on all three. Now we've gone over all of the information that you need to know about bay types and the bays themselves, but I do want to give you some pointers before we end this this video. I highly encourage you to test your bays before saying this and that about each bay part. Certain parts of a bay, especially the blades, don't mean what type they actually are. In most cases, yes, they belong to that type. One example I can think of is Viper Tail, and Viper Tail's blade is a stamina type, but according to Zanki, Viper Tail is good for more aggressive play. I will say this one more time, I highly encourage you to do some testing before using them for tournaments. I also want to tell you guys that if there is some misinformation that I've said in this video, leave it in the comments down below, and I'll address them at a later date. In the next video, we'll be talking about launchers and stuff related to launchers. Thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.